Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about ideal sub placement, pressurization, part two. We did a part one years ago and we're just updating the most viewed videos. That's one of our most views, top 10 viewed videos. So we're going to give you a little bit more information here. What is a subwoofer? Low frequency pressure de producing device with 30, 40, 50 foot long waves. Where does it fit in our room? Nowhere. No device that produces energy like that fits in any room. Unless you have dimensions that are what? 40 foot high, 40 foot wide, 40 foot long. Who's got that? Okay, then you're still gonna have some at the lower frequencies, like 20. But for all practical purposes, subwoofer doesn't fit at all in anything, in any room, okay? So, what, how are we gonna find out how this is all gonna work? It's part science, it's part subjectivity, because everybody's preferences is different. I mean, I, I used to go to the theaters all the time in, in L.A., and the Dolby theaters, the Atmos theaters, huge pressure. 120, I'd take my phone, have my app, 120, one time 128, huge pressure, okay? Quantity, but no quality. All it did was shake the whole building. That's all I heard. I didn't hear a real big explosion or a car crash. Couldn't hear the dialogue after the explosion because the tail was so long. All right, so what's the best place to do it? We're gonna use a process called voicing and measuring. Voicing is we're gonna move the subwoofer around in the room. How are we gonna start? We're gonna start with the subwoofer in the center of the room. I know, not a good place, doesn't matter. I want you to get a feel for your room. This is the whole purpose of the exercise. We're going to move left sidewall, right sidewall, six inches, foot at a time. And we're going to listen. We spend time listening. It might sound horrible, but that's okay. Listen to how horrible it sounds. Get a feel, get a ratio of, oops, if I move it close to this wall, it sounds like this. If I move it close to this wall, it sounds like that. You need to know that. You need to build a reference. That's what you're doing. Do it yourself. Don't take anybody's advice for it. Don't even take my advice for it, except for this. This is a good start. Do the same thing front to center. And then do the same thing floor to ceiling. Okay, elevate. So work with all three dimensions that you have, all three sound fields in the room. Try to find the best spot, okay? It's not easy. You have to experiment. And guess what? Every song you play is going to be different because it's going to have different frequency and amplitudes of low frequency pressure. Here's another problem. The gain, the remote, the volume. The more you put, that's going to change things too. Okay? All input in a room is air. Remember that. All right? So we can measure. We can use an RTA. We can look at 30, 40, 50 cycles, 60 cycles, look at what's going on, move our sub, put it in the center, look at the RTA, play a song, keep the pressure level the same. I like to tell people 83 to 85 dB, that's usually the range most of us listen in. And look at those three octave bands and see what you got. See how they move. Do a screenshot, do 30 seconds, record that movement. Move it the other way. Take a screenshot, record that movement. Watch both of them. Watch how they move. You're going to see good from bad. It might be all bad because that dimension's not going to work. Okay, we have two more. Keep moving. All right. Final position is going to be amplitude dependent. This is the kind of the bummer of the whole thing. You go through this process, you find, wow, it sounds good. It's going to sound good in, in most situations. That's why you have to move it around and, and, and do some voicing and, and doing some measurement. But remember, it doesn't fit anywhere in the room. So every place you put it's going to be a compromise. So you want to find the best place that works for the particular music that you listen to. Classical guys are going to be different than the rock guys. So you have to figure all that out. So it's going to be dependent on the app. What's a good step-by-step -step procedure to, to deal with this little monster, if you will, in a, in a box? It's like the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> Treat the room modal issues first. 30, 40, 50 cycles. Get those treated as best you can, okay? 
You don't treat it by adding more of a problem, more subwoofers. Ugh, believe that one. All right, you can't, you can't do it. So you treat the real modal issues and then you isolate, elevate and attenuate with our subwoofer platform because it has the technology to deal with those frequencies built in it. And the best place to put sound absorption technology is as close to the source of that problem, subwoofer, as you can. Well, the subwoofer sitting on the absorber can't get much closer. Casters make life so much easier on subwoofer platforms because you can move it around. Back in the day, you know, we had a separate amplifier for our subwoofers. We had speaker cables, long analog speaker cables. Can you imagine what that would be like today? The cost of these analog cables? Oh my God. And the signal loss, of course, it didn't matter so much with subwoofers. But now the amps are in the cabinets themselves and, you know, you, you've got a, a digital line out from the processor to the sub. So no more speaker cables, but it's, uh, it's different. I don't know if it's better. It's different, okay? So isolate, elevate, and attenuate. That's what you got to do with the sub. And then you got to treat the run modal issues. Then you got to find the correct position. So this is, subwoofers are a whole separate beast and they take a whole separate look and a whole separate system to deal with. Shut your speakers off. Just work with your sub through this whole process and you'll, you'll come up with the answer. If you're still having problems, send me an email. I'll give you some starting points. I need your room dimensions, obviously. Okay. Ideal sub placement pressurization part two. A little bit more information for you. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.